Let's look at some more examples of distance. I'm in section 1.1 on page 62 looking at problem 5 where we're given two points the point 3 5 and the point minus 2 5. This P and Q in front is just notation. It's basically just saying that P is the point 3 5 just without using an equal sign. But it's traditional, so and it's what the book uses. So following the book's notation, we label it as P parentheses 3, 5, Q parentheses minus 2, 5. But anyway, we're supposed to find the distance between P and Q. Well, let's use our formula. We're supposed to compute the difference in X's, square that, and add it to the difference in y's. So this distance is equal to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now, the question is, what's our x2 and what's our y2? It doesn't really matter. So long as if you label this x2, then you have to label this y2. If you label this x2, then this has to be y2. So either way, let's just say this is x2, y2, which would make 3, x1, and 5, y1. So x2 is minus 2, 3 is x1, y2 is 5, and y1 is 5 as well. Minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. minus 5 times minus 5, or minus 5 squared, is a positive 25. 0 squared is just 0. So this is simply the square root of 25, or 5. So the distance between these two points is 5 units. And this is actually pretty good because if you think about it, in this case, this is a, a rather special case. Three units over and one, two, three, four, five up. So something like here. One, two to the left for Q and five up. P and Q lie on a horizontal line. You don't have to go up or down any to travel from P to Q. All you do is just travel left or right. And you have to travel five units left or right to get from one to the other. So, good. Our intuition matches the formula. So if we take a look at, say, 6 in this section. Our point is the point minus 1, minus 5. That's our P. Our Q is the point 2, minus 3. If we're going to find the distance, between these two points, then we need this distance formula. That this distance, d, is simply the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Again, it doesn't really matter which one you pick as x2 or x1, 
just have to be consistent, if you will, in your labeling. So let's try it out. Let's switch it up a little bit. This time P is going to be our X2, Y2 point, and Q is going to be our X1, Y1 point. And if you think about it, it really shouldn't matter because the distance that you'd have to travel to go from P to Q should be the exact same distance to go from P back to Q. Going one way or the other shouldn't be, there should not be any difference in the distance you have to travel. So if we look here, let's see, our X2 now is minus 1, and then we have to take away x1, so 2, y2, y2 is p, so that's minus 5, and y1 is a minus 3. Be careful when substituting this in, because this minus 3 has two negatives in front of it. There's a negative in the formula, and there's a negative on the 3 just from the point. So those two negatives have to appear there or you're going to get the wrong answer. Minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3. This is minus 5 plus 3. Which is going to be a negative 2. and negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, which is a positive 4. And 9 plus 4 is 13. And if we think, is there anything, is there a nice perfect square that goes into 13? If we can try to simplify this any further. And the only thing that goes nicely into 13 is simply 1 and 13. So it's prime. There are no perfect squares that divide into 13. So if you want, you can leave your answer as square root of 13 units. Or if you prefer, you could write it out approximately. And square root of 13, that's between, 13 is between 9 and 16. So square root of 13 is going to be between 3 and 4, square root of 9 and square root of 16. It's in fact 3.60555 units. Either way, 